In this video, we will start taking a look at gear trains. Primarily, we'll be looking at three types, simple gear trains, compound gear trains, and epicyclic gear trains. Simple gear trains consist of single individually mounted gears whose axis of rotation are fixed in space. Here is an example of a simple gear train. As the name suggests, gear train consists of a series of gears connected to each other, forming a chain-like structure. Uh, in simple gear trains, only the first and the last gear in the train decide the velocity ratio. All the intermediate gears are not contributing to velocity ratio. At the most, they will be affecting the direction in which the last gear rotates. Adding a gear or removing a single gear would reverse that direction. Uh, their role would be more towards providing a conduit for power. So they just take power from one gear and pass it on to the next one. And uh, this is how it moves. Let us see it in motion. So you can see at every uh, engagement, so at every pair, uh, the direction gets reversed. So the red gear moves in anti-clockwise direction, clockwise, anti-clockwise and clockwise again. And the velocity ratio is just the function of the number of teeth on the first gear, Z1, and number of teeth on the last gear, Z4 here, and that is going to give us a velocity ratio. Now, since all these gears are connected to each other, engaging with each other, forming a chain, all of them must have the same module or the same pitch. And therefore, their sizes will be linearly directly proportional to the number of teeth that they have. Now suppose you want to get a very large velocity ratio. What would it mean? That would mean the ratio Z4 upon Z1 is very large and therefore the size of your first or the last gear will be uh, much larger than uh, the other one. And this may not be very convenient from space point of view. So for getting a large velocity ratio simple gear train is not a practical solution. For that we use compound gear trains. Compound gear trains are made up of compound gears. Compound gears are uh, like pairs of gears coupled to the same shaft. So when they rotate they will be rotating together at the same uh, speed or same RPM. And this kind of compound gears can be connected to each other to form what is called as a compound gear train. So here is one. So we start with a simple gear with number of teeth Z1. It is engaging with this green compound gear or the larger member of that compound gear. So the speed will reduce from the red to this green speed will reduce. But at the same speed, the smaller part of it will also start rotating, which engages with the larger part of uh, this blue gear. That lower speed is given to this smaller part and then it engages with this purple gear which rotates even slower. So this way we are getting reduction in speed at every engagement from this red to green, from this green to blue and from blue to purple. So in stages we can achieve the reduction in speed or increase in speed if you are moving in the other direction and uh, we can achieve a very large velocity ratio. So here you can see the velocity ratio is not just decided by the first and the last gear but all the intermediate gears contribute to it and therefore you are seeing all these terms z2 z3 z4 z5 the number of teeth on the intermediate gears this is how it rotates so you can see uh, our first gear here is rotating uh, much faster as compared to this one and you can see successively the speed is reducing the green one is rotating a little slower blue even slower and the purple one is the slowest. 